Hi and welcome back to part 2. How Ground Current Affects Dairy Cow Health and Productivity Dr. Don Hillman is joining us again to discuss cow health on farms with a ground current problem. Welcome back Don. The last time we spoke we discussed how dairy cows respond to ground current pollution. We focused on behavior. What are we going to talk about today? Let's talk about milk production and herd health. These are the key effects of ground current on milk production. On a dairy farm, producing a lot of high quality milk is the primary function of dairy cows. Something that reduces milk production can severely affect farm income. As you know, cows are milked twice a day, and the farmer knows how much each cow produces. This provides a lot of information to the farmer. I work with farmers that have a ground current problem. One of those farmers, Farmer Pete, offered to share some of his records with us. This shows Farmer Pete's milk production per cow from 2003 to 2014. The provincial average is in blue. Farmer Pete's production is in red. The provincial average is increasing slightly. Farmer Pete's production is going down. Milk and dairy products are an important part of the agricultural industry in Canada, and especially in Ontario. The Canadian dairy industry is worth $10 billion annually. Dairy is an important agricultural industry in Michigan as well. I was involved with a stray voltage or ground current case in Michigan. I was working with one of the top dairy farmers in the state. In the early 1990s his cows appeared to be agitated. They started kicking when they were being milked. Milk production dropped, and he became 45th in the state for milk yield. Here's a graph that shows the amount of milk produced by each cow during the year. The values fluctuate between 22 and 23,000 pounds per cow. What happened in 1998? As you can see, milk yield increased by 4,000 pounds per cow. That year the electrical utility replaced the distribution line and his milk production immediately increased. This is a good news story. Wouldn't it be wonderful if the electric utility fixed the problem in areas where they are contributing to ground current pollution? Was he the only farmer affected by ground current? No. In 1995, 255 farmers in Michigan, filed stray voltage complaints. I calculated total costs including damages, expert and court fees, and cost of outside counsel. This came to $75 million over 9 years or just over $8 million a year. Are farmers successful with their lawsuits? No. Some may settle out of court, often with a gag order, which means they are unable to disclose the value of the settlement. Most give up because they can't bear the delays, the costs and the stress placed on their family. In 2008, a French court ruled in favor of farmers and awarded a settlement of almost 400,000 euros. It seems that French farmers are more successful than farmers in North America. Let's discuss somatic cell count. What is a somatic cell and why is it important? Somatic cells are an indicator of milk quality. They consist largely of white blood cells that increase in the milk in response to pathogenic bacteria and thus reflect milk safety. When an animal is stressed or is ill, somatic cell numbers increase. When this happens her milk cannot be sold, and this places a financial burden on farmers. Why is lengthening milking time important? Today it takes about 5 minutes to milk a cow with an automated milking system. Several cows can be milked simultaneously, adding even a few minutes per cow to the milking time can increase the workload for farmers that have large herds. To make matters worse, some cows won't let down all their milk. This cow has a healthy udder, but you can see she has more milk in the two hind quarters, than in the two front quarters. Ideally, very little milk should be left in all four quarters after milking. Cows that retain their milk can develop mastitis, which is an infection of the udder. The udder gets hot, swollen, and sore. Her milk can't be used. This takes us to herd health.
I expect a cow with mastitis is given antibiotics to fight the infection, and the milk can't be used until the cow recovers. That's correct. If the infection becomes severe, she may lose part of her udder. Here's an example of foot rot, an infection of the hoof. On farms with ground current, foot rot won't heal. We've seen these before. Swollen joints. It's as though they develop arthritis. Farmers complain of the same symptoms. The cow on the right is doing much better. The hardest to deal with is when a farmer finds a dead cow. The cow can be healthy one day, and dead the next. Autopsies don't reveal much. Farmer Pete sent me this photo. Fame was a healthy animal and suddenly went downhill after calving. She was dead 24 hours after she calved, and it wasn't due to milk fever. Farmer Pete lost 12 cows in 2015. With an average cost of $3,000 per animal, he lost $36,000. Loss in milk production came to $90,000 and he failed to meet his quota. Over the life expectancy of these animals he lost three quarter of a million dollars. Farmers can't continue to bear such losses. 2015 wasn't an unusual year. Farmer Pete lost 115 cows and 25 to 30 calves in the past nine years. If this isn't cruelty to animals I don't know what is. Over the years I have met farmers with similar losses. Once a cow goes down, she just can't get up. Within a day or two, she is dead. Some of the best farmers have the worst problems. This is not an example of poor management, as some would like you to believe. This is a problem of ground current. That's certainly true for Farmer Pete. He went from second in the county to 180th on his herd management score, in 10 years. We will talk more about the sources of ground current in upcoming videos. I think we should stop here. Before we leave, I would like to thank Farmer Pete for sharing his story with us, for those of you who would like to learn more. Here is a paper Don Hillman and colleagues wrote and published in Science of the Total Environment in 2013. Happy reading! Join us next time and learn about effects of ground current on reproduction.